Hey there everybody, welcome over. It's another video about traction control brought to you by Kyle Rose from Kirithi Sports. I want to say thank you for watching my previous video, but this one we're going to talk about how to properly use traction control in Gran Turismo 7. Now I know what you're thinking already. Uh, hey, we already talked about this. Kyle, we, we, we don't want to use traction control. We, we don't think it's necessary. Uh, Gran Turismo 7 isn't a sim. That's cool. I'm not trying to argue any of your opinions, but I think that it is important to understand that this video is probably not for you. I'm not going to try and convince you to use traction control, but this is for people who do use traction control and you want to be more effective with it. I think it's a very useful tool in this game, especially to enjoy longer races. Uh, but yeah, I usually set my traction control at one, but I will say, don't use it on the Group 4 cars. Like what you see here with the Nissan. This car is all-wheel drive in Group 4. I don't think it needs traction control. There's some other Group 4 cars as well that I don't think need any traction control. And that's cars like the Supra, uh, the BMW in Group 4, also the RCZ in Group 3. But cars like the Viper, rear-wheel drive cars, uh, and also some mid-ship uh, cars like the Audi and the Ferrari, I think need traction control one. But we're going to take it back to Daytona. We're going to do some more testing here to kind of describe to you how we use traction control in this game. So we're going to go take it back to the road course here. Eh, we're going to do it in the evening this time. We'll do it daylight and see what happens. Uh, but anyways, bringing it back to Daytona. We're going to start things off again. As you can see, we have our old time there, 139.4, in a totally stock Viper. The only thing that we've done is ballast and other things. Uh, but what we're going to do here is watch what we do with the throttle inputs, because that is going to be a critical part on how to use the throttle and also use the traction control effectively. So you see, as we enter the corner, we still roll on to the throttle. You can see we're actually not far off traction control. And what that does is it helps us get more acceleration out of the corner, it's more effective, and it actually uses pretty similar uh, throttle path that you would if you didn't use traction control, but you can see how much more lifting that the throttle is doing. What you see there, the solid white line is how much throttle you should be applying. Even there in that kink, you can see traction control kicks on and the car is still very loose. You can still easily lose this car. You can still pitch it sideways and do your slip angle and everything. But with traction control set on one, what it does is it actually gets you out of these corners more safely, more consistent. And as you can see, the power adds on really nicely there. And you still get out of the hole very quickly, especially in cars like the Viper. Like I said, the RCZ, it's questionable if it is actual beneficial, but I think it is really efficient as long as you are still using the throttle in a normal modulating fashion. Uh, so again, cutting through the bus stop there, you can see actually the traction control kicks on just a little bit there as well. Uh, but overall, that is a lap around Daytona with the traction control on. You can see how we're modulating the throttle. We'll st we're still following a similar throttle path, um, but it isn't anything too dramatic. What it does is it simply gives you more confidence when you use it. Key things to remember here are don't stab the gas. That is ineffective. The car will absolutely lose it on you in the sense of you can still spin the car out with traction control one on on rear wheel drive vehicles. Um, but it is something important to remember. Don't, it's not an on-off switch. You still need to be gradual. The, the closer you can get to right on the limit of traction control turning on, the faster you will be able to get out of the corners. Uh, it's the same thing with ABS. You still have to modulate your brakes a little bit in this game. Uh, not to the extent like, say, an iRacing or something along those lines. But cars like this, the Group 4... Um, BMW, I don't think needs traction control. There's a few cars, race cars... Play around with it. Don't be afraid to use traction control. I don't think it deserves the stigma that it currently has in Gran Turismo 7. It's a very useful tool in most racing series. So pay attention to that. It's, it's not some evil thing if you use it. It doesn't make you a slower or a worse driver than the next person. Especially if you can use a tool to become faster and become a faster race car driver, why not use it to your advantage? If you want to see someone use this all the time, Come over to my stream over on Twitch. You can check it out right here at the link below. Uh, I stream a bunch of Gran Turismo 7 and iRacing at the moment. I play some other games as well over on Twitch. But either way, it's a fun atmosphere. I'd love to have you guys over there. Come check it out. Uh, you can watch me race with traction control on, and you can tell me how stupid I am for using it. But that's totally fine. I encourage the comments. I encourage the engagement. Come hang out. <laughs> Anyways, adios, everybody. Thank you again for watching this video. Till next time, it's Kyle Rose with Kirith Esports. I'm out of here.